Hello, friends. So I'll be talking on this uh, very brief tidbit talk. So uh, as you see, I'm excited because I'm talking about this little talk which I got stimulated to talk about when I put these questions to all my excellent trainees here. So I just asked my four trainees who are sitting with me, what are the measures that you would undertake to reduce RV afterload? So this was the question I asked them this morning. And I have a final year DRNB who is past theory, who is giving practicals. Then I have a first year DRNB. I have an advanced trainee post IFCCM. Then I have a, another colleague of mine who will be consultant. So, uh, so when I asked them that, so what intrigued me is a varying answer. The first year DRNB just threw in some uh, random drugs like nitric oxide and uh, uh, so, so on and so forth. So, and another gentleman just could not answer. So, the final year DRNB also I saw it was not very well organized. So, I thought these are the simple questions we ask in exams and we would have to have clarity how we approach. I tell all of the trainees to start as a broad-based answering. So, how would you answer these questions when, and this is something we see day in and day out in our ICU. So, I just thought I'll cover this. So, when we ask this question, how do we reduce RV after load, we have to categorize them into three important components. So, measures to reduce pulmonary vascular resistance, measures to reduce pulmonary artery pressure, and measures to improve RV contractility. So, this is how I would expect someone to answer this, and this is the right way of approach. And what are the modalities that we have to reduce PBR? We have categories of drugs. So, at an advanced level trainee, or as a consultant, I would want to have some, anyone to have clarity, how you categorize the drug. So we have to categorize it into at least five categories. Inhaled nitric oxide is one of the components we use to reduce pulmonary vascular resistance. And all these are potent pulmonary vasodilators and helps in reducing the pulmonary vascular resistance. Then you have this prostacycline, like hypoprostenol, iloprost, or treprostinol. So these are the ones which again act as a vasodilators, pulmonary vasodilators, thereby reducing pulmonary vascular resistance. Then you have phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. So these are all different classes of drugs. And phosphodiesterase inhibitors, they tend to increase the CGMP levels and causes pulmonary vasodilation. And sildenafil and tadalafil is the third group of drugs that helps in reducing pulmonary vascular resistance. And the fourth one are the endothelin receptors. So I would expect all our intensive care colleagues to know this categorization of the drugs uh, that we tend that are there in the armamentarian to reduce pulmonary vascular resistance. And endothelin receptor antagonists are bosenton, ambrisenton, and macitenton. But the most important thing for an ice intensivist is the fifth category, which is very important, is to prevent hypoxemia and oxygen. Oxygen supplementation or preventing hypoxemia is so terribly important as a means and modes to reduce pulmonary vascular resistance because there is a defined entity called hypoxic. When there is hypoxia, there is pulmonary vascular constriction. So, if you see this nice illustrative figure, when there is an alveolus which is diseased and there is an hypoxic alveolus, uh, this is a very nice diagram for you to remember that you there is a vasoconstriction and oxygen tends to at least mitigate or alleviate this severity of this vasoconstriction that tends to happen. So, hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction is an, also an, a very important entity that one should take efforts to mitigate and alleviate. So, they cannot be hypoxemic. Anyone with an RV problem should not be hypoxemic because it perpetuates this uh, vasoconstriction and leads to increase in the pulmonary vascular. So, these are the five categories I would expect any of our advanced colleagues to bear in mind as tools. And the second important entity that we need to address is the means and ways to reduce pulmonary artery pressure. So we may, so this is the challenge for intensivists, how we balance the fluid between, they should not be too dry because if you diurize them overtly, it reduces the cardiac output. And if you give too much volume, it increases preload. So are we, as we know, it is very much volume dependent, but doesn't mean that they need more volume. They just have to be u volume. So they cannot be too dry, they cannot be too wet. So maintaining that excellent fluid balance with all the brilliant tools the intensivists are sort of adept to have to put in place. And they should have be just about on a due volumic status, not in a more volume. And this is a challenge. For all of us, it's a challenge. Most important, as an intensivist, I would want you to tell me 
that you have to prevent peep. Peep is not good for RV because peep increases the RV after load and we have to avoid peep because if you give more peep, there is increase in the intrathoracic pressure and it worsens RV after load. So this is something I want all my intensive care colleagues to know that peep is not good for RV. And this is what happens in ARDS. In ARDS, it is shown that RV failure is what increases the morbidity and it prevents us from weaning these patients from the, vent uh, from the ventilator. And this is something which we have to avoid. And protective lung ventilation. So low tidal volume and permissive. I have used the word permissive hypercapnia, but studies have very clearly shown that we cannot maintain CO2 more than 60 because more than 60, your RV dysfunction tends to worsen and they have put, after 48, your clock starts ticking. So now gone are the days where we say that you can maintain high CO2 with normal pH even in a patient like ARDS where there is RV strain. So PCO2 has to be less. So protective lung ventilation goes a long way in sort of reducing the PA pressures. And the most important component I would expect our colleagues to bear in mind is if someone has a pulmonary embolism that needs to be treated. So either with thrombectomy or thrombolysis or with anticoagulation because that also, so treating the underlying cause also becomes an important aspect in reducing RV afterload. So these are the uh, three, two, at least the three ma major divisions that you would have to look at. And how do we improve RV function? So obviously we have inotropes. So dobutamine is something that can be used. And if you look at this table, so you see that it increases cardiac index and uh, it has no effect on increasing the pulmonary vascular resistance. But more than up to 10 microgram is found to be safe. If it is more than 10 micrograms per kg per minute, it is shown to increase the pulmonary vascular resistance and it can cross up to 10 micrograms is reasonably safe to improve the RV function and reduce that RV after load. And mildrinone is uh, another drug which can be used, which has very similar and maybe the response of tachycardia may be little more lesser or blunted than dobutamine. And of course, levosimendone is another drug that we have. So these are some of the agents that you could put in place to improve the RV function where there is an RV after load. Most importantly, tachycardia is bad. So we have to put in efforts to reduce the tachycardia by using beta blockers or using other agents because tachycardia is bad for RV afterload. So these are some of the components that we need to adopt when we are talking about offloading the RV. Now, in ICU, the contest and, and this has shown to reduce the RV wall stress. So in someone who is intubated and mechanically ventilated, especially in intensive care, the type of patients we see with ARDS, where ARDS with an RV afterload, so we need to take efforts to reduce the preload and most importantly, increase in the afterload becomes very critical for these patients and this prevents early weaning from the ventilation. So the key components in these situations is control hypoxemia. CO2 is bad because gone are the days where we used to say that tolerate high CO2. So now CO2 is after 60, it is like a clicking sort of a time bomb that your RV strain keeps worsening. So now the whole intent is to accept some permissive hypercapnia, but not too much of high CO2. So control CO2 and control airway pressure. So the key targets in patients with ARDS to reduce RV after load is to keep P plat less than 27, which we all know, keep driving pressure less than 18, which we all know, CO2, try to maintain less than 60, because more than 60 is shown to worsen the RV strain and avoid acidosis. So these are the four targets that we need to have to reduce RV after load in patients with ARDS. And most important for intensive is if there is RV strain that is setting in, proning has shown to reduce the afterload, RV afterload. So even early proning in patients where you believe there is more strain on the RV, proning helps. So this is something you need to keep in mind. Most importantly, your atrial contraction contributes to 40% of the filling. So if there is any atrial arrhythmia, we need to mitigate that. So atrial maintaining AV synchrony and preventing supraventricular arrhythmias is very important in reducing the RV stress because anyone with an RV stress, tachycardia has to be avoided because that reduces uh, RV stress and any supraventricular arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation or flutter has to be managed very aggressively so that we reduce the RV stress. And if all this fails, then you have to move to mechanical support. So if it is a cardiopulmonary failure where there is a lung and cardiac, then you have RA and LA, ECMO that you have to think of. 
If it is respiratory and biventricular failure, then it's a BA ECMO you have to think of. If it is right ventricular failure, you have to think of percutaneous RVAD or impella RP or tandem heart or surgical RVAD with Centrimag or Biomedicus. If it's isolated respiratory failure, I'm sure most of your experts, you have to think of BV ECMO. So even when patients are on BV ECMO, but the measures to reduce RV after load should continue. It's not like because BV ECMO is only a bridge. So you have to adopt all those measures, all those measures to reduce pulmonary vas vascular resistance, all the measures to reduce pulmonary artery pressures and treating the underlying cause and improving the RV contractility has to be in place even though they are in BB ECMO. Uh, this is just the figuratives as to how Impella RP and Centrimac look. So thank you, friends. That's about just I wanted to give a gist on this for all our trainees because when we ask this in exam, we need to have an absolute clarity as to what are the components that we need to put in place to reduce the RV after load. So I request all of you to submit your valuable work to a journal of acute care. And of course, you can visit my website to react to this lecture. Thank you. Thank you, one and all.